All right, the time has come, and we're going to talk about these glaring flaws in the fourth season of True Detective, a.k.a. True Detective Night Country. And, yeah, let's go ahead and get through it, you guys. Let's go. What's going on all my Flixers? I am JC from JC Flicks and today I'm going to give you my spoiler review of True Detective Night Country. I did just get finished watching it and I wanted to talk about some of these things, right? I was going back and forth with myself on whether or not I would create a spoiler review for this or spoiler video just to kind of talk about a lot of the unanswered questions and just questions and thoughts that I had on this season overall. There's a lot in it and I feel like I wanted to talk to you guys about this and I wanted to share some of my thoughts as well as I want you guys to share your thoughts, all right? So make sure to drop them in the comments, especially after the video or even during I don't care either way. I'm going to go and answer those questions for you or to the best of my capabilities. All right. And I'm going to I'm going to give you my theories and what I thought about it and what I thought happened or even my interpretation of this season. All right. Now, before I do get started, please make sure you hit that like, hit that subscribe, hit that notification bell to stay up to date on new videos. I'm always uploading. All right, so I'm a pretty big fan of the True Detective series, and I've been thus far. I've watched every single season. I've kept up with a lot of them. And just detective shows in general, as well as films, I just love them, all right? I love having a plot where you're trying to figure it out with the main characters, puzzle pieces that you're trying to fit together. And the as the plot goes forward, you're trying to, along with character development, you're trying to figure out this case, right? And I feel like a lot of times, especially in film and shows, some of the best type of shows or films are the ones where the case isn't so simple to solve, right? And I feel like with the true detective shows, they've kind of been up that alley, right? They've been in that world where it's not so easy to explain. There's a lot to it. There's a lot of elements. There's a lot of puzzle pieces. Now, with this season, I thought the same was going to happen as well. And for the most part, it did. But I was very, very surprised and dumbfounded at how many questions there were of this season, right? I had some myself as well as uh, my brother who loves detective shows as well. And we were kind of sharing some theories and whatnot back and forth. So I went into the season really hyped about the horror element. And I know that's one thing that Issa Lopez decided to put into this show compared to Nick, who's the previous creator of uh, the first uh, few seasons, right? And I know she was inspired by like such films as John Carpenter's The Thing, which I did mention in my first episode review. Go and check it out. It's a spoiler-free review, all right, for the most part. Now, I know she was inspired by that as well as the Dyatlov Pass incident. All right, so I probably butchered the pronunciation of that. But that type of incident was actually a real case that happened, right? It was um, one of those freak accident type of incidences that happened with a group of, I believe there were Russian researchers, right, that were trapped in the snow and pretty much ended up dying the same way as these researchers in this season. So I was kind of given a lot of that information and I was given that background as I started to do more research before this season even started, right? So I was very intrigued. I was like, I love the elements. I love some of these ideas. I love how it's inspired by that case. Let's go, right? I'm hyped, right? And I will say the first five episodes, as I've said in my last spoiler free review, I really enjoyed them for the most part, but I had this feeling deep down in the pit of my stomach, like, are all of these questions really going to be answered in just one episode, especially at the end of episode five, 
when we just had one episode to go, which was episode six that just released last weekend, right? So I was like, that's kind of a lot to cram into an hour or even an hour 15. And just like I thought, I felt like it was a little rush. Now, what I wanna know from you guys is what did you think, not only overall, but one of the things that really annoyed me at least and which brought down the rating for me when I reviewed it was that they, they never really explained the tongue. They never explained who did that to Annie K. And they also didn't explain how the tongue ended up at the research lab. Now, when I did watch the last episode, I did watch it with my best friend. She had pointed out how the character that they were talking to when they showed up the house, she kind of, her reaction about that, about the tongue, she kind of had this weird expression on her face, right? As Kaylee Reese, AKA Navarro was talking to her saying, hey, what about the tongue? And she said, that's not part of our story. Now, my best friend pointed out that her reaction just didn't seem so blank. It didn't seem so surprising. It kind of seemed like she was being either one, sarcastic, or number two, she maybe had some kind of intel on that or she had something to do with it. Just like she had kind of confessed, right? So I was thinking, well, maybe she did. Now, one of my theories at first was, well, what if Annie Kay's ghost had something to do with moving the tongue, at least? But that just sounds, that sounds crazy, right? That sounds asinine. Like, how can a ghost move her own tongue? It just sounded weird. So I was like, wait, no, that doesn't make sense. But I'm curious to see what your guys' theories on that. Now, one of the other questions I had was when Kaylee Reese's character, Navarro, is going to pull Liz Danvers out of the ice when she sees her son and Navarro's having a vision. And then you see her arm just go in to save Liz Danvers. Now, if you notice, you go back on there, she had a green beanie when she was walking out in the snow. But in her vision, she had a pink beanie. Now, when she pulls Liz Danvers out, she has a pink beanie on not the green beanie anymore and it was just kind of those weird things where i was like wait so what does that mean and not only that but i feel like throughout most of the season you kept getting certain questions like that and i felt like aside from the tongue thing they did answer certain questions but it was like really all that for that especially like the oranges. So Navarro kept seeing oranges. One of the things I felt like is if you're gonna keep showing this this orange, this visual type of clue throughout the season, it's gotta be a deeper meaning. And you find out in the last episode is because her mom loved oranges. That was one that I just, that threw me off. And I was just like, wait, what? Like, well then why? Kind of led me to that. You know, you, you baited me all this season for that. Another thing I wasn't crazy about, you guys, was they kept talking about this spiral. They kept talking about that symbol. And it was older than the ice. It's been here for years. And it kind of led you to believe that there was a connection to the spiral cult from season one. And I love that. I was like, okay, so it has to do with that cult. They're going to bring it into tying into season one. It's going to be amazing. And even with the women who killed the researchers, one of them happened to put it on one of the researchers forehead right and you kind of there's no lead into the spiral cult there's no reference of it none of that it's just all because annie k had a dream about this symbol decided to get it tattooed along with clark and yeah that's about it it's like that's where it went and that was it there was no background of that of it being connected to season one it was kind of like throughout most of the season episodes one through five you kept seeing this symbol everywhere and it's all just because she had a dream about this symbol and she got a tattoo of it and yeah so now the women to get the researchers back one of them ended up drawing it on the forehead of one of the researchers kind of to make a statement but it was like that's really what what you wanted to get out of it like you really just wanted to bait us throughout most of the show thinking that hey it's going to tie into season one in the spiral cult all just for that. And that I just, I, I guess those were the biggest things that really bugged me. And I was like, well, why now? One thing I will say though, you guys 
again, this is a spoiler review. And the reason why it did have that rating that I did give it is because yes, in the first part, and even with Hank having something to do with it, and Clark also having something to do with it, he pretty much did it on his own with the researchers. I felt like for the most part, that was pretty predictable. I called that in episode one that Hank had something to do with it. That was really predictable. And that, that was kind of a letdown. But what picked it up for me a bit was the fact that the women had something to do with it. Uh, the the janitorial staff. I love how in certain shows or films, justice is served in an ironic way like that. Kind of like in the movie Knives Out or even in The Murder of the Orient Express. I love shows or films where justice prevails, right? Or justice has the last say. I did like that, but I did feel like it was a little too rushed and it was kind of like, all right, let's just, let's just say that the, okay, these women did it because they, they, they found out the truth. Let's just have them do that. Okay. And let's try to tie it up. And it was like, okay, that was a little rushed, especially for one episode. But I do kind of like that feeling of the justice was served to those researchers who wrongfully killed Annie Kay. Now, all of those things being said, you guys, I want to hear your theories your answers to some of these questions. What do you think happened, especially with the tongue? Who cut it out from her? I know there's speculation about Hank that maybe he did it to send a message. Who moved the tongue? Also, what do you think about Navarro at the end? Did she die or is she just staying with Liz? What do you guys think? Um, I know Liz had even said that she wasn't out in the ice. So maybe that's a cue that she didn't die. And that's what I took out of it. I thought maybe she's just living uh, in seclusion with Liz and she doesn't really go out often. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below about some of those questions and some of those things that kind of annoyed me, to be honest. Let me know what you thought as well overall of the season. And did you feel like it was a little too rushed? And just like me, it could have been great, but it just kind of fell. Again, before I do leave, my name's JC from JC Flicks. Please hit that like, hit that subscribe, hit that notification bell to stay up to date. Until next time, I'm out.